Hey guys, welcome to Ask Fern Friday, where you ask questions and I give you answers. Let's get started. Hey guys, <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Ask Fern Friday, where you ask questions and I give you answers. Helping me out today is my girlfriend Chelsea. She'll be reading today's questions. What bands have you been in? Plus, any big bands you're thinking of joining? Uh, I've played in a couple local bands. Uh, the most notable one that I did a lot of work with uh, was Silence the Messenger. I was with them for about seven or eight years. We toured a ton and we put out uh, two albums with me on them and then one that I just uh, toured off of with the band. That was a lot of fun and I've had a lot of offers for bigger bands as well. It just, I don't know, it just has to be the right fit for me in order to be worth it to me to leave all this stuff behind and my home life and everything. As a kid, were you already planning on being a drummer? Um, yeah, I think the moment I started playing drums, I kind of knew that this was what I wanted to do. In my early years, I didn't really have a whole lot of like experience with music or anything going on. I just had a music-filled family, but I really just went off whatever my parents listened to. And it wasn't until I started playing drums that I found a bunch of stuff that I liked and I wanted to play. I knew from that moment that I wanted to play music for a living and I wanted to play drums. Uh, professionally, and it's just been a nonstop steamroll towards that ever since. <laughs> Do you speak Spanish? Yeah, sí, sí, hablo uh, poquito español. Sí puedo entender, uh, pero casi no puedo hablar español. Uh, pero si me preguntas cosas en español, de vez en cuando sí los puedo entender y te puedo contestar así. And translate that. Yes, I do speak Spanish. I don't speak much Spanish. But if you ask questions Spanish. in Spanish, then I can oftentimes respond if I can understand. And if not, then I'll just kind of cheat and use a Google Translator <laughs> to get back to those people. You can only save one Slipknot album and the rest are erased from history. Which one are you going to save? This is really hard, mainly because it comes down to self-titled and Iowa. I think if I had to pick between the two, I'd have to go with a self-titled first album just because it came on the scene so hard. And I feel like a lot of those songs still stand the test of time and I can still go back and jam them. But it's a really close call between that and Iowa. <laughs> What's your favorite drum cover to date? This one's a little tough. I have a couple. My Flesh God Apocalypse one is probably still one of my favorite, and that's because it got me into Sick Drummer Magazine. My People Will Equal Shit cover with Thomas, Ray, and Rufus. That one was just a lot of fun, and I really like how that one came out. I like the response that everybody has given us for that and has encouraged us to form some sort of supergroup band. <laughs> and Divine Heresies Bleed the Fifth. I did that one a couple years ago, and that one was also featured on Sick Drummer Magazine, and I just really liked the, my performance on that one. I felt like I was really at the height of my cleanliness when I was playing a lot of that faster stuff, and I kind of wish I could have a little bit more time to get back to that level. Do you have a favorite anime, and if so, what is it? Uh, my favorite anime is One Piece, <laughs> and I feel like that's a cop-out answer because it's it's such a long series and I've been watching it for so long, but that's part of the reason why I love it. Things take a really long time to develop in the show, but once they do and they pay off, then it's just this huge feeling of like, oh, I'm so invested in these characters or whatever storyline is going on at the moment, and uh, I like the show so much I got Ace's Jolly Roger tattooed on my back the way he does as well. <laughs> What is your favorite part? Of, what's your favorite parts of drumming? It's hard to narrow it down to one thing, but I would definitely say one of the biggest things is just the ability to express myself in a positive way. It's always been a really good way for me to work out like any emotions or things that I've been going through. And I just feel like it's one of the few places I can really let loose and be myself without having to worry about the opinions or thoughts of a lot of people. And I mean, thankfully, a lot of people are really positive about my drumming and I've got a lot of like really nice comments and really cool things over the years because of my drumming. But I would definitely say it's really helped me honed into who I am and uh, helped me express myself in a way that I feel very creative doing so. What are your busy busy <laughs> biggest musical inspirations, bands, artists, individual musicians? Uh, I would definitely say Metallica, The Offspring for sure. The Americana CD I got from a friend in elementary school and he kind of set me on this path of everything that I do nowadays. As for individual musicians, 
there's just so many. John Bonham from Led Zeppelin, Joey Jordison from Slipknot, Travis Barker, Mike Portnoy, George Coleus from Nile, Derek Roddy. There's a lot of musicians who aren't even drummers who I really respect and uh, take a lot of influence from. It's just, it's really hard to narrow it down to just one individual person or band. When did you start playing drums? I started playing drums at the age of 11. My dad bought me my first drum set the summer after I graduated elementary school. He was just looking for me to do something positive during that summer, so he got me drums, a bass, and an electric guitar. He himself is a musician, so he kind of just figured I might take after it. As soon as I sat down on the drums, I was like, oh, this is, this is what I want to do. So I played drums and bass for a little while. I could never really get the hang of electric guitar. I just had a lot more fun playing drums than I did bass, so I just st stuck with that instead. <laughs> what sticks do you use and why? I use Vic Firth's X5ANs. So they're the Extreme 5A nylon variants. They're a half inch longer than the standard ones, and I use those because the extra length helps me play harder. A lot of my drumming is based around letting the drums themselves and whatever instruments I'm using almost play themselves and I'm kind of just controlling them as I go. So the extra length helped with that and they're the only brand of sticks that I could really trust. There was a point in time when I was touring in Canada and I had like $50 in my bank account and I needed new sticks. I bought two pairs of sticks and saved the rest to buy food and stuff. I had, I think, a week and a half left of dates and those two pairs of sticks lasted me the entire time. I could have cheaped out and gotten a bucket of sticks, but I'm sure I would have ate through those right away. So Vic Firth has always been my go-to and I've always trusted them and know that durability wise, they can always stand up to the punishment that I give them. Would you ever consider picking up another instrument other than bass or drum? I really want to learn piano and keyboards. I know how to play a little bit. I know like some basic chords and enough to kind of get by with my job here in the recording studio. But I really wish I was more fluent in it because it comes up very often. I find that if you can play piano, then you can help construct chords for guitars or vocals or melodies or anything. So I feel like it's a very universal instrument in that regard. Best advice to stay relaxed while drumming, uh, arms and legs. You have to control your breathing. If you let yourself get excited and over the top, then you're going to end up fatiguing yourself because you're going to put a lot more power and emphasis into stuff that you probably shouldn't. I learned this trick from an old George Coleus video. Just kind of try to keep your breathing in sync with the actual tempo of the song. If the tempo is, then you kind of breathe in. Everything is always in a cycle, that way it helps regulate your body. Standing up straight helps too, and if you don't warm up before you start playing, you're gonna be tense and you're gonna have to kind of muscle through a lot of stuff, so I feel like if you just do a couple push-ups or little things to help work yourself out and just maintain your breathing, you'll get a lot more relaxed playing that way. What was the first Slipknot song you listened to? I remember this because I was with my cousin and his dad, they were showing me some Metallica songs. It was Before I Forget by Slipknot. <laughs> he was he was showing me a bunch of like metal bands that he thought I would like. He showed me one by Metallica and then he showed me Before I Forget by Slipknot. I loved both of those songs and those those two bands are still extremely high on my list. I just remember sitting in the back of my cousin's Mustang and just jamming out to all these cool metal songs, but those two were specifically ones that stuck out to me. Hardest show you've played or which made you most nervous? I don't typically get very nervous before playing shows. I think the only time I ever got nervous was the first time I performed in front of anybody, and that was at my middle school talent show. I was like woefully overprepared for, <laughs> for what it was and was like just ready to lay down everything I could and my sticks flew out of my hands mid-performance. I could not finish the rest of my drum solo or whatever the hell I had written. <laughs> oh, no. So people just saw me doing a bunch of crazy stuff, sticks flying, and I didn't have any backup. So I think that was the most nervous I've ever been playing a show. <laughs> Simply because of the fact that I was so embarrassed that I had like just practiced and rehearsed and did all this stuff and the one thing I didn't think to bring extra of was sticks. <laughs> did you have like sweaty hands or something? I don't remember <laughs> like it was just I was like incredibly nervous it was the first time I was playing in front of anybody like or a large pool of people much less a group of people that I knew and were friends with so that just made it even more embarrassing and I think second 
to that would be the sold out show that we played with Attila in Kentucky. That one was just crazy because I wasn't expecting it to be so massive and it was like, whoa, like this is this is really cool. So how do you practice a song? Do you learn different parts at a time? I feel like I have a very backwards way of learning stuff. Ever since I was young, I had really good pattern recognition, so much so that I cheated my way into first chair violin and stuff in mariachi because they thought I could sight read really well. But what they didn't know was that I just needed to hear someone play something once or twice and I could immediately get it. So I kind of applied that to drumming. When I learn songs, I listen to the song five or 10 or 15 times just to kind of get the feel for the overall parts. And then in my head, I segment that. So all the verses I know will be one beat, all the choruses will be another. And then it's just a matter of figuring out how many times those repeat before changing to the other ones. That way, when I actually sit down on a drum kit, I know the song about 80% of the way. And I don't have to spend a lot of time actually figuring out stuff while trying to hear it. So you have like photographic memory, but like with Sonically. ears. It's weird. I don't know. Auditory I, memory. There's probably a word for yeah, it. Yeah, it's really weird. Like I don't like... I've met a couple people that do that. Uh, Thomas Alvarez from the People Equal Shit video, he's the same way. All he needs to do is hear a vocal line once or twice and he can get it. And he's the only other person I've ever encountered that has this same kind of thing that I do or like same pattern recognition that I work with. Musical gift. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it's a musical gift or a musical curse, but it helps me a lot for when I'm trying to learn material really well because I can learn the broad stroke stuff and then all I have to learn after the fact is just the little fills in between each part. And it also helps for my job because then I very quickly pick up a band's material and can tell if it's right or wrong, having only heard it once or twice. I've seen you use Axis DW9000 and the set you are using now with the interior straight spring. Question, which pedal do you think is the quickest? Which set is the one you honestly prefer? I actually still use the same Axis pedals that I've had for the last 10 years. They just look a little different now. I played DW7000s, but I have played the 9000s, I've played the 5000s, I've played Axis, I've played, I've played a, a ton of different pedals. And I keep coming back to my Axis DRA21s, simply because I feel like it's the best middle ground. You get the direct drive response, but the beater is cut at an angle, so it's a little bit closer to the head, and it feels more like a chain drive in that regard. Over the last two or three years, uh, I have had to replace a couple parts, and this company called ACD Unlimited actually sells upgrade parts for the Axis. So I have their spring geometry upgrade, their heel plate upgrade, and a low block. It changes the angles of my actual pedals, and the spring geometry upgrade helps me play with a little bit more control because the beater isn't fighting against me once I get to the kick drum head. They're really comfortable to use, and I've gotten really accustomed to using them. But if I had to pick any other pedals, I would probably say the ACD Unlimited Darwins are my go-tos. Just because they have addressed a lot of issues that many other companies are overlooking, but they're a bit pricey. <laughs> so for the time being, I'm sticking with my Axis and they're perfectly fine for me. What is the hardest song you've ever played on your channel? Uh, Flesh God Apocalypse, The Violation. I was woefully unprepared to play that song, but I still went ahead and did it anyways. I think the video that I put up was my third or fourth attempt of doing it, and if you've ever listened to that song, it's not the kind of song that should be done in multiple sittings. <laughs> you should probably try to knock it out in like your first take or two just because of how difficult and fast it is. And especially since their drummer played everything with doubles, I believe, heel toe, and I try to muscle through it with singles. I got through a lot of it, there's a lot of mistakes in it, but it's to date one of the most difficult songs I have on my channel. That one and uh, Behemoth's Amen, that one is really hard. I did a lot better on that one, but it's still just as difficult. It's a lot of fast, very long sustained blasting that is hard to control. And I would definitely say those two are the hardest ones on my channel. Have you ever played live or thinking about playing live? Yes. <laughs> I've been playing shows and playing live since I was 14. I played with a local band for many years and I joined uh, Silence the Messenger when I was 17. So my first tour was when I was 18 years old. Uh, we did a West Coast tour so here to Washington, I think, but the tour got cut short. And over the following years, I did full US tours, I did Canada once. It's been a lot of fun and I really enjoyed touring and being out on the road. It just takes a lot of time and it's a lot of sitting around and doing nothing, which kind of makes a workaholic like me very antsy. <laughs> so I think if I were to do it again, I would have to take a laptop and some writing tools. That way I could at least get some 
uh, writing and work done while I'm out there and not just sitting around playing video games all day. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for joining me on this first Ask Fern Friday. I have enough content to do a second one of these, and if you would like me to answer more questions or if you have anything that wasn't answered in today's video, feel free to comment that below, and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe and hit the Notifica like and the bell for notifications on when new videos come out. And that's it. And that's it. Goodbye. <laughs> see, see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>